Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about trade management and rules. Now, make sure you're taking notes as you should on every single Zoom call, YouTube video, anything where you can get knowledge, you guys. All of these little gems I give you guys on my YouTube channel and in my course add up, but it's about actually taking this knowledge and implanting it in your head. Sometimes watching is not enough. Sometimes notes aren't enough. You have to go back and read, 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 practice, practice, practice. So this should be short and quick so you guys can like this video and save it so you guys can often reference it and make sure you guys have everything down. Okay, so this is trade management and rules. Now, I do have a confirmation checklist video which you guys can watch. I will try to leave that below. But this is just a little bit more rules and details that I use to help myself you know, manage trades and see if things are still valid. So let's get started. Number one, have your lots ready. Okay, so this is my real lot size. Um, you guys see there's two columns. I obviously don't have my lots in there. Um, this was for November. I just took the screenshot for doing my November one. I used to journal on paper, but now I don't, especially since I'm not only always home and I fill up notebooks and the pages and all that stuff. So for me, keeping it in my notes is, it's actually, for me, it's been a game changer, as I said in my mentorship, because above i actually have my schematics so the schematics that i have in my private pdf as well as the schematics from the book i actually have it screenshotted and then i have my checklist so you can actually do like all these cool things in notes now so when i go to get my lot size i'm passing my confirmation checklist i'm passing my my mindset i'm passing my schematics so you know, I'm not forgetting a step in my list. So too many times people have this notebook and that notebook, this uh, Word document, which I definitely don't recommend, but to each your own. I just teach you guys exactly what I do. And I think a lot of people don't understand that every single step you do matters. You know, I had a student who said their screen was too small. I said, you need to go on Kijiji or Craigslist and get a monitor and hook it up to like um, an HDMI cord because you know, you can't trade off your smartphone, even though people say that in MLMs, because you can't see when you're actually a trader and have to mark up. So all these little things of how things should look and how you should set up is very important. Now, whatever way you have your lot sizes, um, I don't recommend, and I tell my team, I don't recommend you calculate your lot size every time you take a trade. Now, the reason that is because sometimes people forget and they don't do it and they estimate. So I recommend you calculate your lot size weekly. Now, when you're taking four trades a week, it's not going to be a dramatic change in your lot size, okay? So if I have a $1,000 account and I lose four trades, I lost $40. My lot size is not really going to change. So if I take two trades and I lose $20, my lot size is not going to be that big of a difference for me to have to go recalculate it to make the next trade and say, obviously, I make the $100, right? Even after that, I do not change my lot size. It's not going to be a dramatic change, especially when you make profit. If you make profit, you may lose the next one. Okay, I suggest calculating your lot size weekly and have it ready to go. And this just takes away, there's so many things you guys have to do with Forex. There's so many confirmations mindset. There's so many things. So when you're ready to place that trade, you need a system that's going to let you place that trade ASAP. And you don't want to spend even five minutes calculating your lot size. You want to spend five minutes going through the schematics and checking things off, dotting your I's, crossing the T's. Too many times people are like, yeah, yeah, this looks like it's, this looks right. Let me just go, what's the pair? What's the lot? Da, da, da. And they spend time there. You need to spend time double checking your homework, okay? So have your lot size ready. Calculate Wheatley. Number two, use limits only. Limits only. I rarely use market execution. Maybe if it's like US 30, but I rarely use market execution. Why? Because if you're looking for a schematic, and all your T's are crossed, your I's are dotted, and you have all the phases, then it's going to work out for you 90% of the time. If you're not comfortable setting a limit because it's not really perfect, then you shouldn't be trading that schematic. So use limits only. Now, have your alerts to you know find when you're getting your sow, break a structure, whatever. But as soon as you get that last piece of the puzzle in your phase D, then you need to set your limit. And that's also going to teach you how to manage trade. When people overtrade, it's because they market execute. You don't overtrade limits. You don't accidentally set 10 limits. You accidentally market execute and revenge trade because you keep clicking buy and sell. Okay, so these small tips I'm giving you guys, it's law. Like if you literally do exactly what I say, you will change everything. These aren't suggestions. I teach you guys exactly what you guys need to do. You have to ask yourself. Okay, you know what? I keep revenge trading. I need to start using limits. I, I market execute and I set my alert right to the entry. We, we don't do that. Number three is set an alert at 90% of your trade and collect 90%. So we say collect 90% at 90%. What does that mean? When you have a trade, you're in the trade, great, take profit. 
collect partials at 90%. So if I have a 1 to 10 here, like this is my 1 to 10, then my 90% is around here. So I'm not collecting partials at halfway after the new structure. Personally, I collect 90% at 90%. So if I have a 1 to 10, and I'm trying to measure if I shorten this, and it's a 1 to 9, that's when I'm collecting partials. So I have an alert right here before I hit take profit to collect my partials and move my um, take profit. Collect 90% of your trade at 90% because if you have a 1 to 10 and you're collecting partials at 1 to 3, 1 to 4, 1 to 5, you're not closing it on a 1 to 10 and it's ruining your risk reward and it's going to be harder for you to stay in profit because you're ruining your chances, right? If you have a 20% win rate with Wyckoff, you're profitable as long as you're doing 1 to 10s, 1 to 9s, 8.5s. But if you're doing 1 to 10s, you have a 1 to 10 setup because I used to do it. I used to have a 1 to 10 setup but close 90% at 1 to 4. That's a 1 to 4. That means if I lose the next four trades, I'm at break even. So 90% at 90 and just watch the trades. It's not going to make a difference. If you enter this trade, you enter this trade with your life. Like you jumped on the train, like the ship sinks, you're, the captain goes down with the ship. That's every trade. Yes, you can break even and reduce partials, but I still do that at 90% of my trade because you're going to get stopped out. It's just how it works. So you need to jump ship when you enter these trades. Like you can't just be taking 10 trades a week and all that stuff. I take four trades a week. Number four, journal why you enter the trade as soon as you enter the trade or set the limit. So as soon as I set the limit, like again, I've jumped my ship. If it doesn't activate, cool. Nine times, nine times out of 10, it always activates, um, whether it's stop loss or take profit. But I need to journal why I entered this trade right away. So you have to take it seriously. You want a detailed confirmation of what you have or what you're missing. Create a case study to defend your position. I'm telling you guys, you guys need to treat this like military missions. Okay, I'm going to set you know, this situation up here, I'm going to sail here. Here's my plan. This is why. And if things go off course, I have a detailed document of what happened wrong. Okay. So I have an accumulation. I have my breaker structure. Um, maybe, um, let's say my, my trading range is not aligned. Okay. So I have nine out of 10 confirmations. So if I lose I need to know that if I lose, it's because I didn't have this confirmation. If I lose and I'm like, oh crap, my structure's wrong, then I have to go fix it and say, you know, it's actually structure. But you should be able to say, I have every single element in this trade and I'm putting my life on it and I'm going, I'm going to take profit and I'm going down if it hits stop loss because there's absolutely no reason why I shouldn't enter this trade because I have every single element and you cannot tell me otherwise. These are the serious conversations you need to have with yourself. A lot of people are just getting excited because we're doing Forex and it makes money. And we're all going to have Lamborghinis and retire our mothers, right? Focus on what we have to do here. Focus on the product at hand, understanding the structure, understanding each individual element and taking time to make sure that, that this is going to be the plan to take you where you need to go. So let's talk about some rules that are unwritten in no book. And this is just rules that I've paid mentors thousands of dollars to know. Small, small rules, to be honest. Um, well, this one's not really a rule, but it's definitely a thing that people need help with. Your PS slash PSY is the only piece that is a not, this is the only piece that's not a structural element on its own. What does that mean? What I mean is if you were to draw structure, your selling climax, and I know a lot of people in my free group chat struggle with this, your selling climax should be one structure. Your AR should be a structure. Now, a lot of times I see people labeling, a lot of times I see people do things like, I don't even know how to find one. Okay, let's say this. People are saying, well, selling climax ST spring. Now you have little candles here. The, the structure is like this. Your Wyckoff needs to be the actual structure that you're drawing. It can't be just little candles. Say, well, high, high, and M salve and low. It has to be the actual structure no matter what time frame you're on. It needs to be the whole structure and not just the highs and lows of wicks and bodies that you choose in a certain little section. Okay? So that's what each structure should be, or each element should be its own structure, except for your PS. Your PS is the only place where it's not structure. So, for example, here, this is one structure. The PS would be this little part right here where it literally preliminary supported. So your PS is the only part that's not an actual structural point because sometimes I'm seeing people put it as its own structure and it's just not a schematic. Number two, your UT must come back in the range at least 50%. This is a major confirmation. Major, 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 major. Some of these rules, you guys, I don't know why it's not in the book, but I don't know. I just have this stuff and it works. I'm telling you guys the sauce on YouTube for free. I don't know what everybody else is telling you. These small tips, I'm telling you, they're not cute tips. These are the things that are going to take you from 0 to 100. Your UTAD must come, sorry, your UT, 
So your UT for both your distro and your accumulation must come back in the range trading, uh, trading range 50%. Now, not a 50% retracement from your spring or 50% dip from your trading range, which is, you need to draw it. A lot of you guys are not drawing your trading range. It needs to be 50% at least. So it needs to be at least lower than that, okay? Now the last one is your second test versus your m sal versus your sal. A lot of people are struggling with this. So this is a major key as well. Your second test, we, this is our trading range. If you're not drawing your trading range, this is why you're failing at m sal's ST and the whole thing. If you're not drawing your trading range, which I talked about several times, go search the trading range videos. ST is when you're sitting on top of the support of your trading range. And m sal is when your candles kind of come out, but they come back in. This candle, these candles are all are still in the upper half of this uh, skim, um, support. Yes, they're coming out. We have some bodies closing below. But this candle, this candles are still within this range, right? It's not outside. It came outside a little bit, but they're not underneath. So this is when the bodies are sitting on the range and closing. The bodies are coming out. Yes, but the candlesticks are still in. Okay, so ST, M style. A real sign of weakness is when your structural candles come outside like this and come back in. Okay, so if we have a accumulation, this is or a distro, right? Selling t uh, second test or M sal. After a U tab, we should get a sign of weakness that comes outside the trading range, lower than your M sal, closes, completes, you know, break a structure down here, some previous structure, and comes back in to fill your gap. So I think that's a major key. That everyone's struggling with. I want you guys to save this video. I want you guys to send this video to your mother. Like it. Comment if you watch all the way to the end. And if you got value, type value. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video.